Hello, everyone. Welcome to the American Pharmacists Association three-part podcast series, On Point with Pneumococcal Vaccines, What's New in 2022, supported by an unrestricted grant from Pfizer. My name is John Grabenstein. I'm a pharmacist on Maryland's Eastern Shore, and I serve as Director of Scientific Communication for Immunize.org. I'll be your host for this series of podcasts that'll give you the latest updates on pneumococcal vaccines for adults. This is the first episode of three. Let's focus today on pneumococcal disease, its seriousness, and how to take action to prevent it. Pneumococcal disease is a very serious infection and needs to be prevented whenever possible. Unfortunately, tens of millions of American adults are vulnerable to pneumococcal disease and could benefit from vaccination. I'm pleased to introduce Nicholas Lehman, Associate Professor of Pharmacy at Drake University, to help us answer some questions today. Welcome, Nick. Glad to have you with us. Hi, John. Thanks for having me. To start, Nick, let's talk about how you got involved with vaccination. Sure. So as you mentioned, I'm an associate professor at Drake University College of Pharmacy and Health Sciences in Des Moines, Iowa. I also have a practice site at an outpatient internal medicine and family medicine clinic uh, where I assess patients for vaccines and, and help make recommendations regarding uh, vaccinations that are that are needed to help them uh, stay safe. I also co-teach our APHA pharmacy immunization certification course uh, to our pharmacy students at Drake University. Nick, to get us oriented today, let's review uh, bacterial nomenclature. Some of these words have some similarities, but let's compare and contrast them a bit. Streptococcus, pneumococcus, pneumococcal, all that stuff. Sure. Yeah. So pneumococcal disease is caused by streptococcus pneumoniae, which is a gram-positive spherical bacteria. It's really only found in humans, and it's spread from person to person by respiratory droplets, uh, generally through coughing or sneezing, or by close contact of an infected patient. Pneumococcal bacteria typically uh, are found in the nasopharynx of healthy people, uh, in particular in children, and typically don't cause complications. Uh, However, in individuals with weakened immune systems, uh, such as the elderly or very young children, or those with certain medical conditions, uh, the bacterium can spread to other parts of the, of the body and, and ultimately cause the disease. So the bacteria are trying to gang up on us, it sounds like. Uh, there's more than one kind of pneumococcus? Yeah, that's correct, John. So there are more than 100 different serotypes of the streptococcus pneumonia bacteria. Most serotypes can cause disease, uh, but only a few cause the majority of invasive disease, which is really what we're trying to prevent with our pneumococcal vaccinations. The types can vary between children and adults, and the serotypes that cause disease continue to change as the rates of colonization and the types of vaccinations available change. And this is why it's really important for our healthcare providers to ensure that patients are following the most up-to-date recommendations and receiving the most current uh, vaccinations as part of their uh, health history. Great. What kind of damage can pneumococcal bacteria do? So as you might realize, pneumonia is the most common disease that's caused by pneumococcal infection. Uh, Often this can occur as a standalone infection in the lungs, uh, which is called the non-invasive pneumococcal pneumonia. Otitis media, sinusitis are other sites of non-invasive infections. Uh, However, in certain situations, in particular when the disease occurs in combination with bacteremia or meningitis, it can become an invasive infection. Even non-invasive pneumococcal pneumonia can be severe. Uh, Initial symptoms that patients may report include an abrupt onset of fever, chills, chest pain, cough, shortness of breath, and rapid breathing. The fatality rate for non-invasive disease is thought to be around 5 to 7%, but could certainly be much higher in older adults or those with certain medical conditions. Pneumococcal bacteremia, which is an infection of the bloodstream, occurs in about 25 to 30 percent of patients with pneumococcal pneumonia, but is the most common clinical presentation in young children, especially those less than two years of age, which can account for up to 70 percent of invasive disease in this age group. In addition, pneumococci cause about 50 percent of all cases of bacterial meningitis in the United States, Uh, and symptoms of meningitis can include headache, tiredness, fever, seizures, and coma. While the case fatality rate of pneumococcal meningitis and bacteremia is about 22% among all adults, in older patients in particular, this rate could be as high as 60%. So amongst those that survive the infection, permanent neurological damage can also be a long-term complication. So given these significant fatality rates and the risk of long-term complications, The focus on prevention with vaccines on pneumonia and invasive disease is really important in these age groups. 
So Nick, I'm sure you've seen patients say uh, or, or talk about the pneumonia vaccine as opposed to pneumococcal vaccine. When is that kind of shorthand okay? And when do you try to get people to use the the, the many syllable word? Sure. I think it's important to realize that not all pneumonia is caused by pneumococcal bacteria. Um, and so it's certainly possible that they may be a, a separate bacteria, uh, but it's a, I think it's important for patients to realize that uh, pneumococcal disease may have other long-term complications, uh, more severe infections than just pneumonia itself. Yeah, good point. Okay, so on the list of all the pathogens that are out to get us, that are trying to harm us, uh, where does pneumococcal disease rank? Up at the top, in the middle, in the bottom? Sure. So pneumococcal disease, as we talked about, could certainly be a very serious disease and can cause significant illness and death. Uh, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that about 150,000 hospitalizations from pneumococcal disease occur every year in the United States. And as we just discussed, invasive disease such as bacteremia and meningitis can be even more severe. So an estimated 30,300 cases and 3,250 deaths from invasive pneumococcal disease occurred in the United States in 2019. So as a comparison, historically over the last decade, influenza-related diseases result in about 140,000 to 810,000 hospitalizations per year, obviously depending on the severity of that season's flu strain, and results in about 12,000 to 61,000 deaths per year. So even though the overall number of hospitalizations due to pneumococcal disease may be less than those associated with influenza, it often causes more severe illness and complications in those patients who do develop pneumococcal infection. You brought in influenza here, and, and we often are giving flu vaccine and pneumococcal vaccine at the, uh, to, to many of the same patients. Influenza, of course, peaks in the winter uh, consistently. Um, how about pneumococcal disease? Does it strike only in the winter? Unfortunately, no, uh, which is why it's important for pharmacists and healthcare providers to make sure that we're continuing to vaccinate eligible patients against pneumococcal disease. So even though we have maybe have finished our influenza vaccines for the year, uh, it's still certainly important and essential to make sure that we're still vaccinating against pneumococcal disease, uh, even though we're not doing influenza vaccinations, depending on the time of the year. Right. People die of pneumococcal disease all 12 months of the year. People need pneumococcal vaccine all 12 months of the year, so vaccinate all 12 months of the year. Uh, that's a program not to turn off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so who's most likely to contract pneumococcal disease? What are the, what are the risk factors that uh, increase uh, uh, the risk of infection? Sure. As we mentioned earlier, oftentimes it occurs in the very young and the elderly, uh, in particular patients that are 65 and over. Uh, those are the ones that are really going to be most susceptible to pneumococcal disease. And those are the groups that we're really trying to target for routine vaccination. Now, in addition to those two age groups, uh, adults between 19 and 64 with certain medical conditions are at an increased risk of infection as well. And so just some examples of, of those patients would be patients with cerebral spinal fluid leaks, uh, cochlear implants, patients with chronic liver, kidney, heart, or lung disease, uh, patients with diabetes, or those patients that have immunocompromising conditions. So a lack of a spleen or asplenia, uh, patients with sickle cell disease, malignancies, HIV infections, uh, transplant recipients, or those who are even taking immunosuppressant medications such as high dose steroids or uh, other anti-rejection medications are going to be the, the groups in that 19 to 64 year old age range that we're really going to focus on from a vaccination standpoint. And as we know from all the work we, we do with uh, the patients who come to us, the people who come to us, it's not just the stuff in the infectious disease textbook. There's social determinants of health that apply here. H help us tease out you know, what's important in the anthropology of these infections. Yeah. So as we mentioned, chronic disease is, is a major risk factor, but you're absolutely right, John. There are other social determinants of health that, that really impact the risk of pneumococcal disease. So alcohol abuse, cigarette smoking are social factors that increase the risk uh, and are both indications for vaccination regardless of the age of the patient. In addition, there's evidence that African-American adults are more likely to develop pneumococcal disease. Uh, African-American patients may be more likely to have a high-risk medical condition, and disparities in pneumococcal infection rates are maintained in adult populations in the United States, even when we factor in economic status and, and control for other uh, chronic medical conditions. So it's vitally important that we're ensuring this population is being vaccinated uh, and evaluated for appropriate pneumococcal vaccinations. 
Great. That's, that's an excellent uh, point. Thank you for that. Okay. So that covers the disease. Let's shift over to prevention and vaccination. Nick, pneumococcal vaccines have been licensed in the United States since the late 1970s. So everybody who needs it should be vaccinated by now, right? Uh, unfortunately, that's that's not the case. Uh, so among adults age 65 and older, who again, we, we mentioned as being one of those high risk groups, only about two thirds of patients have received at least one dose of a pneumococcal vaccine. In addition, only about 50% of black, Hispanic and Asian adults have received one dose of the vaccine. Uh, so it's also important to note that many patients in this age group may not be fully vaccinated or up to date uh, with the most recent guidelines on available vaccines. So keep in mind that even though two thirds of our age 65 and older population is vaccinated, that means that about 33% of the overall U.S. population, 65 years of age and older, have not been vaccinated at all. So when you think about it, that ends up being maybe 20 million seniors who really could need the vaccine and, and may not realize their risk of being unvaccinated. What about other adults, the ones uh, younger than 65, let's say 18 to 64? So vaccination rates in this age group, unfortunately, are even lower than our, our senior patients. Uh, again, keep in mind, these are our young and middle-aged adults who have one or more chronic medical conditions that really increase the risk of developing severe pneumococcal disease. Of this group, the most recent data suggests pneumococcal vaccination coverage of at least one dose overall among adults aged 19 to 64 was approximately 24% in 2020. Uh, as in the over 65 group, Hispanic and Asian adults were less likely to be vaccinated than other ethnic groups. So given the overall low vaccination rates in this high-risk group, these patients may be a prime target for pharmacist intervention, uh, especially given the fact that they likely have other medical conditions that put them at high risk uh, that they may take chronic medications for. There are multiple opportunities for pharmacists to recommend vaccination when patients come in to refill their medications or otherwise interact with a member of the pharmacy team. Yeah. So th you know, every time that insulin prescription gets filled or digoxin prescription gets filled or chronic inhaler prescription gets filled in that 19 to 64 group, those are probably folks uh, who could benefit from pneumococcal vaccination. Yeah, that's exactly right. Nick, thanks so much. This has been a great start to the podcast series. It's so much useful information. I I if I can summarize our conversation so far, pneumococcal disease is serious and needs to be prevented whenever possible. Tens of millions of American adults are vulnerable to it and could benefit from pneumococcal vaccination. I want to thank Pfizer for sponsoring this podcast, making it possible. I want to thank you, the listeners, for joining us. We hope you find it useful. Tune in for two more episodes. In episode one, we focused on disease severity and risk factors. In episode two, we focus on new pneumococcal vaccines. In episode three, we'll talk about what helps and what hinders vaccination against pneumococcal disease. A list of great references and resources accompanies the podcast in APHA's learning library. The list points you to helpful documents from the CDC, from APHA, and from immunize.org. For example, there's the CDC Pneumorex app uh, for smartphones uh, that helps with pneumococcal dosing decisions. Lastly, keep an eye out for all the information coming out from APHA about future events and other podcasts. Again, thanks so much for joining us. For every pharmacist and for all of pharmacy, stay healthy and vaccinate all year round.